Nancy families and happy Easter. Thank you so much to each of you who helped me to share the Easter story this week in our very special video. I loved seeing what Easter means to each of you. If you haven't seen the video yet, you can find it on our website, seattlechurch.org, under the Worship at Home tab, along with tons of other resources to help you and your families celebrate Easter at home, along with us here at SCC. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited for Easter. Easter is awesome. There's Easter eggs and chocolate bunnies and tons of candy. And if that's not enough reason to celebrate, we as Christians have an even bigger reason to rejoice today. As many of you guys said in our video, Easter is extra special because it's our way of remembering and celebrating Jesus' resurrection. On Good Friday, we took time to remember Jesus' sacrifice when he died on the cross for us. It's a day that's both sad, but also a reason to give thanks. Well, today we can rejoice because we know that Jesus is alive. He didn't stay dead. Instead, he became victorious over death itself. And the best part is that Jesus did it because he loves us so much that he wanted to carry the weight of our sin so that it wouldn't separate us from him any longer. Because of what Jesus did, you and I get to have eternal life with him in heaven that lasts forever. And even better than that, we get to have a close relationship with him that starts here and now. And that's what our story is all about today. So join me as we learn the true meaning behind Easter and the greatest reason to celebrate. Stories of the Bible, the triumphal entry. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms, <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town. You coming? And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. Rock! He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and we'll return it soon. Okay, go ahead. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Huh? The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem, and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset. Hey, Jesus! and they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. So the people kept on singing, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, who is this? And the crowds replied, it's Jesus! And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry, just as God said he would, 
many years before. Now Jesus chose to endure a painful death on our behalf. I mean, he was the son of God. He could have called down the angels to save him, but he knew that he had to die on that cross in order to save us. When Jesus died, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God, it was torn in two. And in the same way, Jesus's death removed the barrier that separates us from God. That barrier is called sin. The Bible tells us that the consequences of sin are death and separation from God. But Jesus died so that we could be free from those consequences. Now that doesn't mean that sin doesn't exist anymore or that we don't still sin. Believe me, we do. But it does mean that even though we sin, we can still be with God. But it's only through Jesus. Jesus once said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Through Jesus, we're able to be with God. We're able to have eternal life instead of eternal death. And we're able to be in a close relationship with God. And that's probably the greatest reason that we have to celebrate today. Now, the greatest way that we can honor Jesus' sacrifice is to choose to live in that freedom to turn towards God instead of sin. Now, you might be wondering, what does it look like for you to have a close relationship with God? I know that it can be hard, especially when you can't see God and he's not physically with us. But he did send his spirit to live in us. Okay, think of it this way. I know there are lots of people in your life who you haven't been able to see in a while because you guys have to stay at home. But just because you can't see them doesn't mean that they don't exist, right? They still do. And you still have a relationship with them. They're still your friend or your family member. That doesn't change just because they're not physically with you or you can't see them. Well, God is kind of the same way. You can't see God, but he's still there and he still wants to have a close relationship with you. Sometimes it takes a little bit of extra effort, but that effort is so, so worth it. Okay, this week my challenge for you guys is I want you to think of two people who you haven't seen in a while. Now, for the first person, I want you to take some time to call them up or video chat with them. And then I want you to remember that God wants to talk to you too. But you don't need a phone to talk to God. You can talk to him anytime, any place, through prayer. Okay, for the second person, I want you guys to take some time to either make them a card or write them a letter. And then I want you to mail it to them. And I want you guys to remember that God already wrote the greatest letter in existence. It's called the Bible. The Bible is a whole collection of letters that God sent to his people in order to tell them just how much he loves them. And it's also a way for them and us to get to know him better too. I know that relationships aren't always easy, especially when you can't physically be with the other person but they are so, so worth putting that little bit of extra effort in. And I hope you guys realize that. A relationship with God, it's the greatest relationship that you could ever have. Because God's love is forever and it's unconditional. That means that you don't have to do anything to deserve it or earn it. He loves you simply because you are his beloved child, and there is nothing that could ever change that. If you guys don't believe me, just look at Jesus. He is the greatest evidence of how much God loves us, of how much God loves you. And that is a reason to celebrate. If there's one thing to remember from our lesson today, it's to remember that God loves you so much 
and he wants to have a relationship with you. And I hope that you guys choose to put in that little bit of extra effort to invest in your relationship with him too. All right, guys, happy Easter. Even though we can't celebrate together in person, we can still celebrate together. So I hope you guys have a good week and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.